all across the spectrum. I played it against Gerard dozens of times in my Magic career. It is, it is a real thing that you don't know what is in this guy's deck. My one tree top village in my first Pro Tour, I was 2-0, and played against Gerard. We were playing what I thought was the same deck, and he, I guess, 15 minutes before deck lists got handed in, he added one Simeon Grunt <laughs> to his joke now called Obs on Midrange deck, <laughs> and I attacked with a treetop village, and he grunted me, and that was the match. You, le you learned your lesson. He's capable of anything. <laughs> Did he pay the echo on the grunts? Oh, yeah, he killed me with it. Very nice. Very nice. Because nothing in my deck's that big. Yeah, four so, toughness is a, that's a lot of toughness. The treetop village, that was, that, was my, that was the best bullet I had in my chamber. Once that was gone, it was elementary from there. Sniped by an orangutan. I'm just saying, it's a real thing when you're playing against Gerard that you do not know exactly what's going on. Now, Tom Ross wrote an article about Embrace the One Of uh, at the back end of last year. And yeah, I, I generally agree with you know, his sentiments in that article. Just, you know, One Of's are often mocked and ridiculed, but you know, they do give you ability to play a game a certain way that no one would see coming. And also, you know, when we see him, when we see Gerard cast a treasure cruise, if that does happen in this game, most of it might think, okay, well, you have four treasure cruises in your deck and, and board in a card like Rest in Peace. And it's like, Rest in Peace is trash against me, and I boarded my treasure cruise out. Yep. You know, like that, it gives you some, the ability to do some things that you can't do otherwise, as Gerard's going to lead off with a Sensei's Divine top here. So there are two Sensei's Divine tops. So the player's championship, he had two counterbalances. He's playing three this weekend. Okay. So he does have that little element to his deck, among several other small elements. Several fun ofs. Yeah. Lebedavich does have two lands out in play. It's funny, we think of Osip, you know, former broadcast partner, a storyteller. I think many people forget a Pro Tour champion. Yep, yeah. Pro Tour Venice. Yeah. Onslaught block constructed. Three, pro, three Pro Tour top eights? Three. Yep. And one of the greatest all-time Pro Tour matches against, in that Pro Tour that he won against William Huey Jensen in the top yeah. four. Well, a, a classic top 10 of all time Pro Tour elimination match, right? you know. You know, people, a lot of people think of him as kind of an old timer, but during his heyday, he could have, uh, I mean, he was someone I looked up to as a Magic player back in the heyday. It's crazy to me that, you know, we're friends and we've broadcasted a bunch of tournaments together, but back when I was coming up playing Magic, both of these guys, I remember I met Gerard at Grand Prix Pittsburgh in 2003, the Team Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. And I met Osip at Grand Prix Boston that was won by Masashi Ayoso. Mm -hmm. where he made the top eight of that tournament playing Snap Desire, as it was called. It was the blue-white Desire deck with Brain Freeze. And yes, Mind's Desire was legal and extended at one point. And probably not for the best, as Gerard playing a Thought Seize here. You can see Osip's hand. A lot of removal, three swords of Plushers, and an Entreat the Angel. So not the, not the best hand right now here for him. And, you know, the, take the Entreat there because Osip could draw Brainstorm and set it all back up. And more importantly, Gerard can now play the game in such a way to blunt these sorts of plowshares. He can just try to win with Planeswalkers or True Name Nemesis, which he has two copies of in his list. Yeah. The coast is certainly clear for True Name Nemesis right now, that's for sure. Fabiano going to sacrifice both his polluted deltas, so it looks like he has some interest in casting something, and he will. And there is True Name Nemesis. So that's going to put Lebedovich to the test right away here of finding a card like a Terminus, and draws his card very carefully, as you should when you are playing Miracles. And will deploy a Scalding Tarn. And it looks like a dig through time is what he picked up for the draw step. Now are you willing to untap and allow Gerard to do whatever he can do with that mana available? Or do you just dig through time right now? Yeah, also does have the ability to dig through time now. He's got two Scalding Tarns in play. That would be cards number two and three in the graveyard, plus five mana in play. That equals eight, and that would allow him to dig. But he's just going to pass the turn back, try to pick a better spot. And here's a thought seize. Well, now he might have to make a move. And he will start by sacrificing one Scalding Tarn. You see him sacrificing one, not both at the same time. Part of the reason for that, I believe, is because he wants to play around Stifle, which is, oddly enough, a card that Gerard could have. Oh, easily. It turns out he has zero, <laughs> but could he have one? And you have to appreciate about Gerard's deck building philosophy. He's been doing this for years, and now it's a little bit more acceptable to do what he does. People yeah. play one of us all the time. Back in the early 2000s, he was the subject of a ton of mockery from people for building his decks this way. No one else was doing this. And now, I'm not saying Gerard is totally right, but Magic is definitely much more in Gerard's camp now than it, was, than it is in the other direction. Oh, I think the community and the game as a whole has embraced one of us. Yeah. Just allows you to build decks a certain way. Here's a brainstorm. Three cards coming, two cards going back, all in response to a thought seize here.
Here's the actual factual counterspell. That'll take care of the dig through time. Thoughtseize will take care of Swords of Plowshares, and it's the red zone here for Fabiano with a true name nemesis. Lebedovich going to draw a card. Terminus? No. There's a land. Just going to pass the turn back. Doing a Terminus check here on Osip's deck list. Uh, because it looks like Osip's deck is inspired a little bit by Reed Duke's build of Miracles. Reed at the Player Championship only playing two copies of Terminus, but Osip has four of those and a copy of Supreme Verdict and two copies of Council's Judgment. So, Trey Nemesis is not the end of the world here for Lebedovich. More answers than most. Osip going to draw a card. Picks up a copy of Brainstorm. A little bit of action here finally for him. But he can't shuffle his deck. So Brainstorm here is kind of anemic. And you can see, you know, also kind of contemplating the same thing. Maybe just passing on this Brainstorm, but I guess decides not to. Three cards coming for him. Two cards, of course, will go back. He does need a little bit of help here. It looks like he found a copy of Supreme Verdict and Sensei's Divining Top 2. And Treat the Angels as well, so it looks like he's found some cards that are useful. I mean, he can flip the game around really quickly here. Clean up the board and treat for a bunch. and. Yeah. Draw might go from way ahead to dead very, very quickly. Brainstorm just kind of a mediocre magic card. Yeah, nothing really special about it. Well, in formats where you can't shuffle your deck, it actually is a little overrated, but once you can shuffle your deck easily, it's not even close to reasonable. Here's Supreme Verdict. That one can't be countered. So that's going to clear up the old true nemesis and death right shaman here in just a moment, though Fabiano is taking a look at his hand, and he will cast a dig through time in response. So a couple of cards here for Fabiano. Two copies of dig through time in his list. Sure. Capable of anything. Close enough. Yeah. Gerard writing. On the select side of Star City Games, that he was going to play this deck again, make some changes to it. Mm -hmm. This is the deck that he played the Players' Championship to a second place finish. So, him playing this has not come as much of a surprise. Supreme Verdict going to resolve now. And Alabadavich will deploy Sensei's Divining Top. And I was, Days I was will take care say, of that. I was not a big fan of, of Osip sequencing here just because he could lead with Divining Top, which Gerard obviously can't daze. Goes up has four mana left over. And then cast a Breberg, which can't be countered in any case. Yeah. So I thought when Dr when Osa did that, he was planning on just not casting the Divining Top at all. Thoughts he's going to take care of his swords. Yeah, the sequencing there is a little bit backwards there for Lebedovich, and it ends up hurting a little bit because top is the best card in the deck. Well, the, the flip side of this is maybe Osip's willing to do this because he wants to get the daze out of the hand so he can entreat for more. Sure. Maybe he's willing to throw it away, and the real prize here is getting a big entreat. Ponder going to resolve here. Fabio going to keep with that Ponder. He's drawing his card. We'll play a land in an island, and now there is a treasure cruise. <laughs> so again, there's, there's nothing his deck can't do. He's got a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And now Lebedovich is going to draw it and treat the angels for how many is the question. He's going to leave up maybe some mana for days. And it looks like he will. And, you know, to be fair, even though the sequencing looks bad there, there's a real chance that Osip just does, you know, playing against his deck, he's, I, I don't think you're a day's deck. That's also, that also could be true, you know? But there's no reason not to do that once you're in the position where I'm going to follow up with Supreme Verdict. To me, the rationale may be, I'm happy to get a day's out of his hand on this Divine Top if my whole plan here is just to entreat for a bunch and kill Gerard in a turn or two. Now, it's tough here for Fabiano, is Entreat the Angels is very good against his deck. Yes, he plays with zero copies of Force of Will. Gerard is a big... Big proponent of card advantage and is really into raw card count. So he just does not like playing with Force of Will very much. And as a result, high impact cards like Entreat the Angels can steal the games from him, even if he's generated a huge advantage. And it was really the same weakness with his Team Italia, you know, that Mardu mid range deck was he could be disruptive and get these good two for ones and generate a bunch of good value. But if someone found a Jace the Mind Sculptor off the top, it could undo all this work. Entreat the Angels, much the same thing. And you take a look at Fabiano's life total, same as Lebedovich's, sitting at 12. But Osip is not facing down three, four, four flyers. Gerard is. And as 
many cards as Gerard has seen this game with Sensei's Divine Top and Treasure Cruise and Dig Through Time. It's got to be three flyers or this game's over. Yeah, I'm looking now for a pernicious deed, which could easily be hanging out here. I don't see one. Toxic Deluge as well. Yeah, toxic Deluge. Perhaps a Maelstrom Pulse. One engineered explosives yep. is totally in his range, but I don't think he has any of this stuff. Here's another, here's a different question I have for you now. What are the four ofs in Gerard's list? What are the cards oh, that he really God. likes? Okay. Uh, I am going to, uh, I'm going to guess Brainstorm is a good, That's one of them. safe place to start. There's four four ofs. Brainstorm is okay. one of them. My next guess would be Tarmogoyf. Not incorrect. Incorrect. Okay. Thoughtseize. That's I know, number two. I know Gerard likes that one quite a bit. Yep. Two. Okay. You got two of them. Do these count lands or? I'm excluding lands. Okay. Spells. I want to make sure I was looking for an easy. Yep. I was looking for an easy way out. No, there. we're excluding lands for this. Okay. Uh, does not play Force of Will. I'm feeling a little frisky. I'm gonna go with Days. It's not Days. The Can't other ones we're so. looking for here are Abrupt Decay and Good Death Right Shaman. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna cast one of those four now here in Brainstorm. Now it is not all doom and gloom necessarily for Gerard. He does have some ways to. Battle through and tree tokens, those challenging. Abrupt Decays, Jace the Mind Sculptor, Liliana the Veil. Uh, they can all maybe help. But, it, it, you know, you're asking a lot here, and uh, Gerard at 11 does not have that much time. He's going to resolve a brainstorm. Cards have gone back on top of the deck now. So Gerard has to kill one of the angels right now, or he's, or he's dead. dead. Yeah. yeah. No, it looks like he does have a copy of Eruptocade in his hand. I think the bigger question Gerard's asking himself right now is, okay, I kill one, I go down to three, but I need to be able to kill the next two. After yep. that, that's the big issue because attacking here for a level double shot is easy, and he knows, okay, I'm going to lose a token. You, you saw him moving off the screen immediately. Fabiano's going to go down to three. Yeah, it's really hard for Gerard to cobble together two removal spells in the same turn. It basically has to ab involve Abrupt Decay, another copy of it. So he can have two Abrupt Decays, that's one way, or he can have an Abrupt Decay plus a Planeswalker. And save himself some points with a Disfigure, I suppose. Okay, that's creative. That's another turn. Another turn might just be what he needs. Well, it leaves him at five, which means that if he can kill one angel, he gets yet another turn to try again. That's well, another turn to spin at top, or what have you. Here's Snapcaster Mage. Lemidavich is going to look at his hand. We know there's a source of flashers over there. Not entirely sure the other card. There's Abrupt Decay right now. Get that off the table. And you laugh at the disfigure, but here we are. Gerard potentially falling to one instead of zero. Fabiano going to play a Misty Rainforest, maybe, and he will. Very unlikely he's going to get the opportunity to crack that, though. We'll see. Lugodovich with a counterbalance as his draw. Shrugged his shoulders, just getting the red zone. Fabiano going to go down to one. There is counterbalance. Counterbalance is typically not very good against Soul Tide decks because of the Abrupt Decay, but Gerard's Abrupt Decays are a little taxed right now. Yeah. Could be better for some portion of the game than you would think. Yeah. So you may ask why bother playing the Misty Rainforest if Gerard knows he's going down to one anyway. Not inconceivable. He could gain some life in this matchup. He has four copies of Deathbright Shaman and a Scavenging Ooze. So it's possible, though unlikely, that uh, that Misty Rainforest could be turned back on somewhere down the line. Fabiano going to spin his top here on Lebedovich's end step. Those cards will stay. Fabiano clinging to life here. He needs a decay or some other way to get this thing off the table. Easy place to start is an attack with a Snapcaster. Mage. Lebedovich is going to go down to 10. I know Sub not even a contemplate using Swords of Pleasures on that Snapcaster Mage. Does not want Gerard to go up in life and then have access to the Misty Rainforest again. Brainstorm. Terminus is the top card of the deck. So Counterbalance won't take care of it, and Brainstorm's going to resolve. Three cards going to come, two cards will go back. And of course, what this means 
is that when Gerard puts two cards back, if he spins the top, the third card down will be a mystery. Yeah, he gets a clean look here and then another clean look. Yeah. He knows the coast is clear for whatever because there's a six on top of Ozipsek. So Liliana the Veil, Jason the Mind Sculptor, of course, Abrupt Decay, these all work. So Brainstorm is done resolving. Now we're going to go spinning, it seems. So again, that third card is the new one. That's the one he puts on top. Ooh, yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I was just saying, stop, stop, stop. Yep. Right yeah. And these two, these two are really, really good friends. So I was just saying, you're not supposed to add this to your hand like it's a brainstorm. It's a top. So we'll see what ends up happening here because Osip did try to stop him there. Yeah. Because Gerard was, you know, sort of slow rolling himself on the third card. That was a mystery. Yeah. That's interesting because that can happen with these different kind of effects too in this deck. When you have ponder, you have ponder, you have brainstorm, and you have top in your deck. Oh, you sure. You kind of cross yourself up a little bit. We've seen it happen before. Thankfully, you know, Osip stopping him there, and Osip's going to end up winning the game anyway. So. No harm, no foul. Oslo Badav is going to win game number one here over Gerard Fabiano. Miracles up a oh. game over Sultai. Yeah, they're good friends now, but I'll tell you something. 12 years ago, they were good friends, and that would have, <laughs> Oslo would have been calling the judge over. Can't get him over fast <laughs> enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a different time for all of us, you know? His competitive drive was at its highest then. Uh, New Jersey Magic, it was just a different thing, you know? We, we, could, uh, we could have some laughs at the TGI Fridays after the fact, but... Inside of the match, forget about it. Perhaps some verbal spats between you guys. Oh, uh, there is one match that Osip and I had back in the day that I'm half disappointed and half glad was not recorded. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. But still friends. <laughs> yeah, still, of course. Still friends. That's good. Of course. We will take a look at the sideboards here. Uh, we will start with Fabiano, where I bet there's a some some something some some nice stuff over there. He, yeah, he only found room for seven one ofs. Okay. Uh, he's got to go Kahari Charm, two Force of Wills, two Spell Pierces, a Vendelian Click, two Surgical Extractions, a Prenish Steed, Nile Spell Bomb, two Disfigures, a Thrun, the Last Troll, a Hydro Blast, and a Blue Elemental Blast. So I definitely like the Thrun. This seems about the best matchup imaginable for Thrun. The Vendelian Click as well, uh, you know, good disruption and good pressure. I don't know if what he's going to want to do with the rest of the counter spells here. I could see maybe Force of Will coming in to give him some protection against Osu's big stuff, uh, but I could also see Gerard just trying to play and attrition gain and hope to fade the worst of Entreat the Angels. We'll take a look at Lebedavich's sideboard, a Jace the Mind Sculptor, two Pyroclasm, two Bane Slayer Angel, two Spell Pierce, Red Elemental Blast, two copies of Endillion Click, and then some one-ofs in Fluster Storm, Force of Will, Hydro Blast, Relic of Progenitus, and Wear Tear. So I think I, I like the Relic in this matchup because Gerard's using his graveyard for a variety of things. You saw Dig Through Time and Treasure Cruise. Low opportunity cost and the upside can be high. I like bringing another copy of Jace the Mind Sculptor. Gerard's decks typically struggle with Jace. It's kind of the nature of the decks he plays. So I like having access to that card as well. I think the two Vendalian clicks are nice. I think the Red Elemental Blast is nice. And the Fluster Storm Spell Pierce, I could take it or leave it. Depending on the cards that Osip likes in his deck, he may cut it or he may want, he may cut it for the counter spells or he may leave those kind of soft counters in the sideboard. Well, we watch one former broadcast partner do battle, and now we'll talk about our other former broadcast partner, Patrick Chapin, and his brand new book. I suppose brand new is incorrect, but the remastering of Next Level Magic. It's the 2015 edition. It's got new new examples, new updates. Uh, it's been sold out in paper book for a very long time. So if you're just looking for a paperback copy, it's your best opportunity to get it, and it's all up to date. Also available as an ebook as well, just like every other time. StarCityGames.com slash NLM to order your copy today. Fantastic book, remastered, new pictures, just an update. Yeah, update to the book. Pretty simple stuff. Again, StarCityGames.com slash NLM for more information about that. As this is fun, getting to watch Faviano and Levadovich too. I mean, you guys have been friends for 15, 20 years? Gerard and I first played in States 1999, and I knew Osip before that. So that's, what's 2015? That's, that's almost, that's... It's a really long time. That's 16 Half my years. Life. That's insane. Yep. That is completely insane. I'm, I'm hoping... I'm hoping that uh, when I go to Cleveland for the Open Series, as you're now be covering, that I get to see some of the people there who taught me how to play Magic. Yeah. Do battle. 
It's always something to go back to your old area where you play and see some of the faces that you don't get to see as much anymore. Yeah, things, uh, things change so much, too. I mean, we were all just in college or dropping out of college or, or messing around, <laughs> and now we all have real jobs. I mean, to the extent that my job's real, we all have, we all hey, have real jobs. It's real. <laughs> it's real. Okay? What we're doing here is real. I don't want to do anything else, so this is as real as it gets. It is always, it's always a lot of fun explaining what I do for a living. Yeah, Gerard's a teacher. OSIP is some um, pretty high up in advertising yeah. for Vonage, I believe. And I'm sitting here talking about the two of them playing Magic. <laughs> yeah. The airplane conversation every time. Just you know, you're talking to the person next to you. What do you do for a living? And I always, I always say, are you ready? Are you sure you're ready? And then, and then I go into it. I, I've just started cutting people off because I, I can't even explain it. I, I just say, have you ever seen the World Series of Poker coverage? It's sort of like that. That's just the, that's the spiel I give. Okay. Every, my favorite part about Magic when you try to explain to someone who doesn't know Magic is everyone has a different spiel. Yep. Everyone has the way of just going like, this is kind of what I do. Yep. Well, Osip has a counter spell in his hand now. And Fabiano's going to live up with a Sensei's Divining Top, so... It's not a miracle's mirror, even though sometimes it looks like it. It's funny because, uh, you know, I used to go to the, they're sold in cards like baseball packs, well, or sorry, in certain packs like baseball cards, but we're quick, quickly reaching a point where baseball cards will be archaic, and that reference will no longer work. Yeah, what's that? Yeah. That, I, that's going to be a weird time. Mm -hmm. They're sold like baseball cards. I don't know what that means. Yeah, what does that mean? Are you talking about, like, fantasy baseball? <laughs> what you, sort of. Yeah, what do you, what do you mean? A bio would be searched for here via Pluto Delta by Fabiano. And here is a Tarmogoy. So Fabiano looking at his beats on early. It's only a 1 2 Tarmogoy at this point, but it can go pretty quickly in this matchup. And the way that Gerard has his deck configured and the way he sideboards and all that puts a lot of different pressure on Osip because he needs to win fights over spells and he needs to win fights over creatures. It's hard to do. A daze. We'll take care of the source of plowshares. And Tarmogoy's a little bit bigger now. And Osip just saying, there's no way he has days against me post-board. Yep. The game inside the game between these two is pretty fun. You gotta understand, when you've been friends for a really long time <laughs> and you play a game of Magic, some of your deck choices and cards you sideboard and the way you play, there's a you want to get them factor. Oh, absolutely. You want to just get them. Is Days supposed to be in his deck post board? I don't know, but Gerard definitely wants to get him. Yeah. That's part of it, too. Uh, for, on the rare times when, uh, when I was testing for a Pro Tour against my best friend, Stephen Berklin, we would just be playing, you know, I remember we were testing for Pro Tour Dark Ascension. I was playing the human deck, he was playing Delver, and we were just taking unorthodox approaches and trying to beat each other, like, a lot. Just at his kitchen table testing for a Pro Tour. Why? Why are we doing these things? We should we just be testing the matchup and just getting ready, and we were just trying so hard to beat each other. But that's just kind of what friends do. Oh, of course. And that's what these two might be doing here, as Levadovich is casting and resolving a brainstorm, so two cards are going to go back. Because you have to have some bragging rights post-tournament. Of course. That's, well, let's call it what it is. And the tournament's over, and these guys go to dinner together. Also, if, if he wins the match, it's going to be all over him. Yeah, absolutely. He'll probably wa be watching the replay at the TGI Fridays. Yeah. Show him, show him the phone. Hey, Gerard, remember when I did this to you? <laughs> Club Dodge is going to deploy an island for his third land and simply pass the turn back. Fabiano going to spin his top here with his 2-3 Tarmogoyf going to play. Life total is currently in the favor of Fabiano, but of course with Miracles, you use your life total as a resource. You want the game to go as long as you possibly can. That's why Gerard needs to be the aggressor in this matchup. Even though he's got some control tools, I think in the long term he can't win that kind of fight. And we saw really the problem with the matchup from Gerard's side game one. Got a lot of good advantages, got some pressure going, did some disruption, countered some stuff, but then Entreat was just too much for him to overcome. And uh, different variations of that can happen in a, in a variety of ways. It can be Entreat. Could he also be Jace the Mind Sculptor? And Gerard, uh, Osip's much better to win that kind of fight than Gerard is. Source of Plow shows there from Lebedovich takes care of the Tarmogoy. So that's no longer on the battlefield. Interesting thing here to note is that Fabiano, again, playing his Sultai Control deck, he played at the Player Championship. One of the players that he tested with was Reed Duke, and Reed did play Miracles 
at the Players' Championship on his way to a top four finish. So you have to imagine that Fabiano is pretty well versed in the matchup. Sure, for sure. Don't know how many games they're necessarily running against each other. And I, my understanding is Gerard Tech for the Players' Championship, he just told Reed, I changed around my deck and you're not going to like it. And they sort of <laughs> just left it at that. But yeah, probably got some games in over the course of the time they were spent testing together. Man, Duke and Fabiano, really, really good friends. So have been known to test for Open Series tournaments together quite a bit. So Fabiano very quickly sacrificed the Misty Rainforest to search for the land. Well, Gerard trying to figure out exactly what he wants to do here now that he sacrificed. Wondering how many cards Lovadovich has in his hand. Quite a few. He's going with a copy of Counterbalance. See if he can get this to resolve. Osip will take a look at his hand. Council's judgment among those cards. Also has a copy of Pyroblast. That looks like he has some interesting casting. And so he will. Pyroblast will take care of Counterbalance. Wants to keep that off of the table, especially in combination with Sensei's Divining Top. And we'll head back Lebedovich's way. Lebedovich will draw and play a Flooded Strand and kick it back over to Fabiano. Fabiano is going to spin the top at the end of Osip's turn. And Osip's got to be pretty happy with how things are going thus far, even though Gerard has top and Osip does not. Just because Gerard's top is a lot less powerful in his deck than, than top is in Osip's own deck. Also, there's not really miracles for Gerard to find. So yes, he's improving his draw steps and he finds shuffling effects. He gets clean looks, but the power level of the card is very different in these two decks. And Osip under no pressure. There's not really anything going on on Gerard's side of the table that's that threatening. So, so far, a good start for Osip. I mean, this is exactly what Osip wants the board to look like. Just keep it clear. Even though there's a top out there, which is a little bit annoying because Gerard gets to improve his draw step every turn, just keep it clear. Keep your life total high, and you'll win eventually. As long as Gerard's not shuffling his deck, he has no miracles, so it's top's fairly anemic. Here's a ponder. Let's see what else Fabiano's up to here. Perhaps another attempt at a Tarmogoyf, and it is. Lebedovich looking at his hand. Again, now you see Counterspell, Brainstorm. So has that Council's Judgment, too. And a Terminus in hand, so... How much does he care about the Lurgoyf? It doesn't seem like a ton. Yeah, he's got a lot of different routes to handle this thing. So it's just about which, which of his answers does, does he feel is the most narrow. Time for a Brainstorm here in response. So three cards coming here. Two will go back, and in combination with that Flooded Strand, not a bad place to be here if you're Lebedovich. And there is Jace among the cards. And this is the, you know, one of the problems for Gerard in the matchup, I feel like, is uh, Osip is just better equipped to resolve his own Jace, keep Gerard off of resolving Gerard's Jace, and is better equipped to win the game when both of them have Jace in play. Yeah, Lebedovich's deck is just the better Jace deck. By a lot. So two cards do go back from Brainstorm. That is done resolving. Fabiano going to deploy a tropical island. You see them doing a Tarmogoyf count here. And it is a 4-5 currently. Yep. Sorcery Instant Land Enchantment. And now here's Swords to go after the Tarmogoyf. That's going to resolve. So Fabiano will gain a little bit of life in the process, but if you're Lebedovich, you have to like where you're at at this point. Absolutely. I mean, Rose of Sec just so much better as time goes on. Perhaps some upkeep action, yeah. Fabiano stopping Lebedovich on the upkeep to cast a surgical extraction. Not a card I would have anticipated Gerard bringing in. It's that get him approach. Well, it, sometimes these Miracle decks also go to Snapcaster Mage in some number. I'm not sure if if he's aware of Ozip's list. 
also there's some value in making them shuffle their deck at various times because with Divine Top they're trying to set certain things up, but this is one of those spots where Surgical Extraction is worth very little. Yeah, look at a little bit of information about the cards in Osip's hand. You see the Counterspell and the Jace there, but even though you, even though you know your opponent has a Jace, it doesn't mean you can beat it. And you can see as we're going through Osip's deck here, there are Baneslayer Angels that he brought in. I was wondering if he was going to do that, and I do like bringing them in even though they come with some vulnerability to Gerard's Planeswalkers, because outside of the Planeswalkers, it's just very unlikely Gerard can kill one once it gets into play. Abrupt Decay naturally doesn't touch that. And then besides that, you have to be going to explicit anti-creature cards to get it off the table. And what are the odds that Gerard has brought those in? Uh, pretty low. Pretty low, yeah. And, you know, Band Slayer Agent isn't a card that we see in all Miracle sideboards. It's actually a card we see quite rarely in sideboards. Yeah. Sometimes Joe that place, sometimes he doesn't. Although I believe Reed did have it at the Players' Championship. Yeah, he did. did some good work with it. And Peacekeeper as well. Can't oh, forget yeah. about that one. Oh, yeah. Osip will draw a card after the Surgical Extraction is resolved on his upkeep. We'll sacrifice a Flooded Strand. And we're going to land out of his deck. We'll see if he wants to deploy Jace here. Imagine if he's searching for land number four, he's going to go for it. There's some risk here. Since Gerard played his land post-combat, it's hard to believe he has something like Spell Pierce, but he could be trying to daze you here. Well, we're in a situation right now where it's make you have it, and Gerard's going to look at his one card. And he's got an idea of what's on top of his deck, too. So Osip pulling the trigger on Jace, the Mind Sculptor, it's going to resolve, and now he's going to go brainstorming. Not a lot of merit to Fate Sealing Gerard because of the Divining Top. Also, Osip's running pretty low on resources, so brainstorm's pretty nice here. But it wouldn't surprise me if he shifted fairly soon into plussing the Jace because he's not that far away from locking Gerard out. Yeah, plussing him himself, perhaps. And I don't know if Gerard can, in fact, get this Jace off the table outside of creature combat, which is going to be problematic under the best of circumstances just because Jace has the ability to unsummon. But uh, Osip, of course, with Terminus and Council's Judgment and all sorts of removal spells. So this Jace might just be here to stay. And a deck that is fantastic against creatures is Miracles. Trying to get it off via combat damage. Or, you know, sometimes a, a man land like a Creeping Tar Pit is really good at getting the job done contorts the way that Lebedovich can play, but nothing like that here for Fabiano well, at this point. Gerard does have one Creeping Tar Pit in his deck. Yeah. So there, there is that, but... And, and Osip is running really short on source supply shares, and currently can't really enable Terminus at instant speed. So there's some hope, but it's going to be tough. Here's Snapcaster Mage. Fabiano going to target his Ponder, so he'll get a little deeper into the deck, try to find an answer to the Mind Sculptor before it runs away with this thing. And he's going to very quickly shuffle, so he did not find what he was looking for at all. And now Osip has a lot of luxury with how to pursue the game from here. I mean, he can just play a one-for-one -one game and try to win with Jace via Brainstorming or via Fate Sealing. Either route is good. Mystery card there from Ponder. Now yeah, we'll spin the top. Cards will go back at a passing of the turn. And as we have seen so many times in Legacy, especially in Miracles, when the player gets to untap with Jace, it's very hard for him to lose. Yep, and this is not, not only just in Magic in general, but particularly given the nature of Gerard's deck. All about trading one for one. No clean way to get it off the table. And you can see Ozip's hand right now starting to get real flush. Two cards going to come back. There's Nared Mesa. This is a Sensei's Divining Top. That's in play. You can feel he's starting to pull away now. Absolutely. Probably only going to try to make a game of it. He's going to go after Jace with Snapcaster Mage. It's down to one. And Osip with Red Elemental Blast in hand, not even bothering to use it because he knows that Gerard, you know, can't really get... A, the difference between Jace at three and Jace at one is not that big. So maybe you can find a better answer to the Snapcaster Mage or something more flexible. Maybe Gerard plays another creature. You get to wave them all away with Terminus. No reason to push the trigger just yet on protecting Jace. 
And also it's in the situation now where, okay, if you're attacking for two, all right, I'll fail to seal you or myself, put it back to three. You have to keep going after this thing. And in the meantime, I'll spin my top and, you know, get things set up in such a way that you're still just really not making up any ground by attacking my chase. Exactly. Looks like he's going to fate seal this way. And Fabiano may have a response here with Sensei's Divining Top, deciding what card he wants to show Osa. What's unique about this when you're fate sealing an opponent who has Sensei's Divining Top in play is you're potentially leaving a card on top of the deck or you're putting one to the bottom. And if you put one to the bottom, that gives me a new look at a card with Sensei's Divining Top. Right. So Gerard kind of wants to show the worst thing, and Osip is probably just going to leave it on top a good percentage of the time. And it looks like that card's going to stay on top. And at this point, it doesn't even really matter if, if you know, Gerard's draw steps are getting improved or not. I think Osip feels like he can hold off Gerard in any case for the next couple of turns and get to an ultimate. It certainly feels that way. Or just force this interaction over and over again where he says, okay, I'll go down to one, untap, do that again, until Gerard has to add more to the table and then Terminus or the counterspell start coming into play. Yeah, that's a big one is I think he's okay with just doing this interaction over and over and over again until he's given a reason not to. Yeah. Because it's not like he's not doing anything in the meantime. Now, here's the thought sees from Fabiano. So this will force Lebedavich's hand a little bit. So he'll cast a counterspell on the thought sees, and we might have a small counter war here. Has to feel important to try to resolve this, given Gerard's state right now. He knows he can't win just by the way things are pacing. So it's bad news if things stay this way. Counterspell will resolve in the thought sees. Lebedavich is going to spin that top, and he does have a copy of Dig Through Time in hand. I think Osip wants a little bit more information before he decides to take through time. And also wants to make sure that there's no hope of it getting countered. Yeah. Time to draw. He's organizing his mana very quickly here as Lebedovich. Perhaps he's found something that he likes. Red Elemental Blast in hand still as well. Yeah, I think this is Council's judgment which it's a way to get the Snapcaster off the table and then continue to brainstorm with Jace. Yeah. There is the judgment. And now it is a brainstorm with Jace. So you nailed it. Three cards coming. Of course, two will go back. And if he ever wants to get really clean looks at the top couple of cards, he's got those two fetch lands in play and Aired Mesa and Scalding Tarn. Yeah, a lot of shuffles here. Yeah. Where tear among the cards, Osa did pick up that turn. He'll pass the turn back, and now here's a copy of Indillion Click. Perhaps it's time for that Red Elemental Blast. Yeah, it seems like a, a fine spot. There is some concern about getting hit with Jace. Treasure Cruise as well. Yep. Maybe a card that's on Osip's radar. There's Red Blast. That's, that'll take care of Indillion Click. We'll head back. Fabiano going to draw. Well, there's the Jason Mind Sculptor. Now, as you mentioned before, Osip gets a lot of looks at something to break this up here between Divine Top and all of his fetch lands. Yep. So we'll see how good this one's going to be. Going to very quickly search up a Tundra, and he's going to sacrifice the Scalding Tarn, too. This looks like he's got something in mind here. Sure. But Gerard's only got so many of these, these kind of haymakers he can bring to the table. And even if he's able to get this Jace to resolve, there's still the issue of this, the entreats hanging out in Osip's deck, where if they ever show up and resolve, Gerard can't really catch up. Well, it's always something he has to think about, right? Where if entreat shows up at any time, I'm not entirely sure what I can do about it. Here's Dick through time. Slovodovich will be delving six cards.
and he'll take a look at seven and take two with him. I think force plus blue card or a red blast. Be happy with either of it. Entreat the Angels and Counterspell among the cards he's looking at right now. And it looks like Fabiano Chase is going to resolve, but given that Osip has now found a copy from Treat the Angels, that might be just fine. Right. Now Osip can say, okay, Chase is in, you get to brainstorm, all on top, brainstorm, put Entreat on top, Entreat, and not a lot to be done about it. Play around days or some other spell appropriately. Go from there. Yeah. There's the Misty Rainforest, just the passing of the turn. And it's okay. going to be in treat for, you know, lethal, basically. Yeah, very, very close to it. Fabiano is at a high life total of 22, but it doesn't take in treat long to get the job done. Lebedovich will draw. Very quickly going to brainstorm here. You can see he's found a game plan that he likes and he wants to execute it. Baneslayer Angel among the cards. Lebedovich will pass the cards, pass the turn back, excuse me. It's pretty entertaining there. I thought that Osip might take that opportunity to play Baneslayer just to force Gerard to brainstorm or do something else. I thought but, so too. Uh, I think Osip may have just better things to do with his mana. Fabiano has anything to set up here. Well, he's got a Jace. He's brainstorming with it. So three cards will be coming. Two cards will be going back. It does have a fetch land in play in Misty Rainforest. Can also get a little bit deeper in his deck with Sensei's Divining Top. And looks like somebody's found a pernicious deed. Pernicious deed helps. I think that Osip does have access to his wear tear. So he may be able to answer it, but uh, pernicious deed at least some effort to be able to be and treat the angels if it resolves. And he's going to deploy it right now. And you mentioned where, Terran. It is right now in Lebedovich's hand. He also has Counterspell, too. So. And it can't really surprise you that given how many cards Osip has gotten the opportunity to look at in this game, that he would have an answer to a card like Pernicious yeah. Deed. It's just, you know, uh, I appreciate Jordan at least making the effort to give himself an out to entreat. But this is also part of the problem is, you know, it's not just about... In Treat, there's a bunch of different cards Jorah has to try to beat, and uh, Pernicious Eat is going to be a dead draw in a good percentage of games, too. Sensei's Divine Top. We'll draw a card and treat the Angels with the card it found, but a Spell Pierce got the job done. So you saw <laughs> Osip try to play around days and did so appropriately, but Gerard says, I have a Spell Pierce. You can't play around everything. And that seemed like Osip's easiest path to victory there. Try to get it in play preemptively so we can take down Jace this turn, but as a result, runs into a Spell Pierce. Well, I think we have a new plan now. Perhaps it is time for the big fella. Baneslayer looks like it's going to be coming to town in just a moment. There that is. Lepidavich also having a copy of Red Elemental Blast in hand. Yeah, he's still got a lot of awesome tools here. Yeah. He wasn't leaning on that entry to win the game. Pass the turn back. Fabiano's going to spin his top. Flying first strike lifelink. Protection from demons and dragons. Rarely does come up. There is Pyroblast on the upkeep to take care of the Jace. And a force of will removing a brainstorm. But now Gerard empty-handed and perhaps just forced to be brainstorming or excuse me, unsummoning now with this Jace. Yeah. Probably only gonna start by spinning his top. See if he can find an answer that way. Or at least find himself some more information before making his decision. Yeah, but his, his hand almost seems forced here. And Gerard knows though, once he starts unsummoning with the Jace, it's only a matter of time before he loses. Yeah. That's not a long-term plan. Fabiano will draw a card with Sensei's Divining Top and now sacrifice Mr. Rainforest. Go get himself an Underground Sea. Now there's a copy of Liliana the Veil, so 
He's got some fight left in him. Sure, that's a huge play here. And you can see Levadovich's hand. Top wear tear digging time. It looks like Liliana may be in. Now Fabiano trying to come from two different angles. Bye bye, Bainslayer Angel. And now he's brainstorming. You can see Fabiano's pace of play is quickened here because you take a look at the clock. About five minutes left to go here, and he's down a game. Yeah, it's going to be, uh, at this point, he's probably just trying to get to a draw here. Dig through time here for Osip. Going to delve quite a few. Take a look at the top seven. Take two with him. The Vendillion Click is another just great card that you may not think uh, would play that much of a role in the matchup because Gerard is the aggressor, but also having some way to fight the Placewalkers here is great too. Yeah. Brainstorm now with Jace. Two cards going to come back. Looks like Lebedovich is happy with his configuration. He'll play a flood of strand, sacrifice that. A lot of movements this turn. Oh, for sure. Yeah. A lot of thing, a lot of different things going on here. Gerard's build does look a little bit better post board. He's got a little bit more power to work with, but it still, still feels like a tough matchup. And it's a healthy amount of options, but I agree with you does seem difficult and it, it's tough for me to believe that he'd be able to come back in this particular game because this is just a game where osip has had jason play for what this is the fifth sixth turn at this point yeah they're at the spot now where they both have competing jaces and we get to see who's is better we felt coming in that osip's would be better in this situation as fabiano is going to try to resolve a treasure cruise no but i was going to spin his top in response Liliana's gonna tick up now. For catacombs, discarded for Fabiano. Sensei's dividing top there for Lebedovich. Now here's a brainstorm. So three cards coming. Of course, two will have to go back, but Fabiano's pace of play is quickened greatly here. He knows that he needs to win. Fluta Delta, he sacrificed as well. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is flipped into speed magic now. Yeah. But is it too late? Here's Brainstorm again. Two cards going to go back in just a moment. Looks like perhaps Surgical Extraction among them. Now there's a copy of Scavenging News. No green mana available, however. And now, since he's Divine Top, so Fabiano's going to use all his mana. He's already activated his Liliana. I guess the only question is, has he used his Jace yet? And I think he has, but the movements there were pretty quick. Yeah. They played two brainstorms on the turn. Novadovic is going to spin his top. You can see Osip's hand here with the copy of Vendillion click there. And the coast is certainly clear now. Given that Fabiano had to move quicker on this particular turn, he's left his shields down to Vendillion click. Potentially. I mean, Gerard still may have his last Force of Will left in his deck in, a ha in hand right now. Oh, well, you're right about that. Not with a blue card, yep. though. And you can see why Gerard, I think, was, was digging like that. He has Force of Will plus blue card. He might be able to actually get this flipped around. Yeah. But I was going to spin his top one more time here. Now that he's got the information. And now he's happy with his configuration. So he will draw a card. Not a miracle, but doesn't need to be at this point. Two mana, perhaps it's time to go through time. And this was the innovation that we saw from Reed at the Players' Championship, just playing a healthy amount of dig through times. Yep. And I... Um, I'm a big fan. 
personally. I'm a big fan of, of having a lot of copies of this card. It's very powerful. I was skeptical at first because I just felt like this deck is all about manipulating the top of the deck and drawing cards is less powerful here than it is in a lot of other decks. That said, it's so trivial to get your graveyard filled up that it's going to be awesome even if this deck isn't necessarily maximizing it. About 30 seconds left to go. And three. Yeah. And it looks like Ozip has again found Entreat. Yeah, first one didn't go to plan. Yep, Spell Pierce took him off guard a little bit. But again, with Fabiano and his wacky composition of deck, it's it's hard to play around everything. You know, you get hit by Daze one time. You, okay, he's on Daze's and no Pierce's. Maybe the next time he gets hit by a Fluster Storm. Who knows? There's an attack. And we are on turn number zero right now as Dillian Click does finish off that Jace the Mind Sculptor. This is a copy of Council's Judgment. And Levin Davich saw so many cards this turn. He's got so much mana to work with. It's hard to believe that Fabiano will have much of a board as he takes turn one of extra turns. Exactly. I mean, uh, in fact, it's actually kind of compelling for Osip to go after Scavenging Ooze here, which yep. I think he's going to because if Gerard wants to plus a Liana, that's fine. Osip has some cards to play with. And if Gerard wants to minus, okay, well, I still have Entreat on top of my deck against your nothing. Yeah, his Liana will be gone yep. at that point. Fabiano going to spin the top here on turn one of extra turns. Fabiano will draw. There's got to be a dig through time for him. I think it's resigned to his fate here at this point where I don't think he believes he can actually get the job done now. Well, he's, I, I would be stunned if he could win the game inside of the two turns he now has a lot to yeah. him. And even if that wasn't the case here, I think that Gerard would be uh, way behind here. Jesus has gone unchecked and it looks like Gerard's not going to really be able to touch it. That was obviously the primary concern is you know, Lebedavich's deck is just a better Jace deck. And it's not to say that Jace is bad in Fabiano's deck. Jace is bad in no decks. Yeah, it's just his pieces are a lot, lot less disconnected. He's a little bit less efficient at pushing it through. Liliana's going to tick down and take care of Vendillion Click. That's the situation that you mentioned. Now here's Deathright Shaman. Two of them. Lemidavich is going to spin the top here. It'll be turn number two here in just a moment. Lemidavich will draw a card, and there is a copy of Terminus. So Deathright Shamans will now perhaps exit the party. Fabiano looking at a brainstorm and a force of will as the cards in his hand. And he'll have to use the last two cards to get it off the table. So Terminus will be countered. Levodaj is going to use his Jace now to draw three cards. Terminus and Entreat the Angels among them. Yeah, just a loaded brainstorm here. Keep in mind, we're at 1-0 so right now, so he doesn't have to win this game. He yeah. can only, only has to play defense. Though, I think that if he were trying to win the game, it would not be that hard. No, with, with Entreat and Baneslayer as the cards he's putting back and Terminus in hand, and now he's just going to hard cast Terminus to clear the board up, you can tell that he is playing defense, and that's smart. Yep. There's no reason not to. Oh, well, was past the turn back. Five is going to spin his top as he works his way into turn number three, and he'll draw a card. And it'll play a counterbalance. And that's all well and good. Lebedavich looking at a copy of Wear and Tear anyway, so he basically has an answer at the ready there. Spin the top will Fabiano. Now Le Lebedavich will spin his top. Not much going on here. Now, I imagine these guys have played quite a bit over the course of their careers. It's not the first time they've run into each other. Any memorable battles between these two? 
Whew, let me think. I mean, there's been so many like PTQs, you know, you know, five in round, five and one in round seven type of stories. But I don't know if there's been a uh, what I would call a signature match. I wasn't sure if maybe one of them beat the other in the finals of a PTQ before. It would be strange if they've never played the finals of like a Jersey finals PTQ. Finals of a PTQ. Or maybe top eight of a PTQ or something. That's definitely happened. Yeah. Finals, not to my knowledge. Team Grand Prix, has they ever played on the same team? Uh, I believe once. Okay. I know you've played with OSIP uh, in a Team Grand Prix yeah, in we, DC. Yeah, a couple team, one Team Pro Tour, one Team Grand Prix. Okay. Ever played with Gerard? No. No? Too wild for you? Too wild. <laughs> <laughs> Uncontro <laughs> uncontro <laughs> uncontrollable. See, he's going to sacrifice an Isle Spell Bomb here, but it looks like Lebedovich is going to go on to win this match. As these two are very, very familiar with each other. Also, Lebedovich going to win one game to zero. It's just a tough match for Fabiano there. It's going to take time no matter what since they're both control decks, but I believe that Miracles is the better position to control deck. Jared 